It wasn't something I decided to do. It wasn't something that I said, oh, I better act like I am care like everybody else. It's a, an unprovoked reaction. And that's what Felix had. It wasn't, it wasn't a, 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 something that he, he decided to do. Felix is in charge. Felix is the boss. Felix is the procurator. And Paul needs to give him something. But uh, yet Paul shows up and begins to tell him, you're not living right. And there's an aspect... And if you've been, been coming on Wednesday nights, you'd be finding out some stuff. But you can't, you can't be wrong with everybody and be right with the Lord. Especially the people in your household. But if you're right with the Lord, you'll also be right with everybody else. But Felix wasn't. He was living in an adulterous relationship. He'd stole another man's wife by hook or by crook. He was a thief. He was a liar. He was shady. It was all about more money, more money, more money. And Paul preached. I, I, I prayed this morning. I, I really don't know how I would do it, but I prayed this morning. And, and, I, and I want you to pray for me that it, that it gets on us. I, I prayed, God, let me preach with the same passion that Paul did. Let me preach with the same fervor that Paul did as he stood there before two people. Who the chances are, when you walk in, the chances are they're not going to listen. But yet he preached with such conviction and such passion that Felix involuntarily responded and he was shaken and he was moved and he was he was touched and his heart was gripped with conviction he was changed by the message of Paul but yet his response was go away Go away. And when I have a convenient season, I'll have you come back. I looked up convenience in Webster's Dictionary this morning. You know what it says? Convenience. As soon as it suits you. He is moved. He is affected. He recognizes that Paul is fueled by something bigger than him. Paul is beneath him in the eyes of the flesh. But he recognizes that Paul is well elevated above him in the eyes of the Spirit because he knows who he is and, and he, he is moved and he is affected by something that's bigger than all of them. His error. And the, the cry of my heart today to you, his error is assuming that God works on the same schedule that he does. That salvation is a matter of convenience. That salvation, that the Lord is our butler. That stands at the doorway with the towel over his arm. Offering to operate at our convenience. When the message of the world and when the message of the Bible are the exact same thing. When the world is crying, come Lord Jesus. They don't know it, but they are. When they're setting things in place for the coming of the Lord, the return of the Lord, and, and we keep showing up for church, service after service after service, and feel the power of the Holy Ghost. Stirred, moved, but not changed. And when we, because we can, tell the power of the Holy Ghost, go on your way. And when I have a convenient season, I'll call you. Salvation is not a matter of convenience. As a matter of fact, there's an elementary factor of inconvenience. One of the most frustrating things as a pastor, and I know I'm setting myself up a little bit this morning to make people mad, but I've said it before, if I anger you into repentance, 
If, I, if through anger I cause you to come to your senses, then so be it. Salvation is not a matter of convenience. This in every way is an inconvenient season for Paul. In every way, everything about it is inconvenient, Brother David. You, we, we don't understand it's not the, the country club jail that you might see or even like the jail that was down here. It's generally a hole in the ground. No bathroom, no water. It is a despicable place. You don't bathe. You wear the same clothes. And you're shackled. You see, there's two messages here. There's the message of the Spirit and a message of the flesh. And my cry today is to tear down the stronghold of the flesh. It's so frustrating to see the Lord working in somebody's life and then miss two or three or four services in a row over inconvenience. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost right now. I feel the power of the Holy Ghost right now. I used to give a speech when I was the chairman of the park board and it would get, we'd get ready for youth league seasons. I used to give a speech to every coach and every volunteer because it was amazing, Sister Maria. I want a coach. I want to pick which kids I got. I want to pick my right practice time that suits me. I want to pick every game time that suits me. I want to get to sit on the bleachers that suits me. And I want the dugout that I like the best. So I cut them off at the pass, brother. I said, let me tell you right now. When you say I want to be involved, you are saying I am willing to be inconvenienced. But somehow the other people don't. I can't believe I got a 5.30 practice time and I don't get off work till 5 o'clock. But there's a huge difference in people who are willing to be inconvenienced. They never complain. They'll be there. But yet when the Spirit starts moving and the Holy Ghost starts moving and there's a response that draws from you. It's a very inconvenient time for the Apostle Paul except for the fact that he's still doing the work of the Lord. There's no denying the presence of the Lord. There's no way to explain away when the power of God gets a hold of your heart. We felt it. Felix felt it. Yet his response was to attempt to fashion what was happening to him right that minute into his life. The recognition of the need for change, yet unsure of how it might affect his life, his standing, his behavior. Here's a sad thing. The Bible says... In verse number 26, that Paul came back again and again and again and again. Felix did indeed call Paul back to him repeatedly, but there's no record of Felix ever responding to the message of salvation. As a matter of fact, Felix, in passing on the opportunity that was presented to him, reverted back to his original focus. He kept bringing Paul back. Hoping that he might give him some money so he could set him free. And he never got, he never got a hold of the fact that Paul needed to stay in prison for his benefit. Two years pass. Felix is replaced. He's removed. He's given another spot. He's gone and no longer his connection to Paul. Festus came and replaced him. I cannot read this. And, and, and this morning, I've been praying all morning long. I sat up here and prayed. I prayed in my office. I, I prayed uh, 
while I was in my truck. I, I've prayed all day, Lord. I, I know, I know, I know my feelings will betray me. And I know that there's going to be people here this morning who have felt the power of the Holy Ghost, who have felt the conviction, who have felt the draw that there's something more that I need. There's something more pulling at me. The way things are going in my life, it's not right. But the response is go, go away. And when I have a convenient time, I'll let you come back. I'll let you come back. I realize something today, not judging. I'm not. I don't believe in that. I, I don't. But I realize something today. Felix is going to stand in judgment. Felix is going to stand in judgment. Stand with me if you would. We talk about it often, especially those of us 